In Galatians chapter number 1, I want to begin reading Paul giving a testimony in verse number 15. He says, But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace to reveal His Son in me that I might preach Him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them that were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by faith unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed. And they glorified God in me. I want to preach on this thought, glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we love you and we thank you for your word. I pray you bless these few minutes we have together now in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. You can be seated. I like the Apostle Paul, the way he writes and, and uh, as he's talking to the folks there. He said, it pleased God, you know, the same God who uh, saw fit to separate me from my mother's womb. He called me into his service. He said, same God who saw fit to see me get born, helped me get born again and called me into his service. That's how God works. I like what he says, though. He said, when he called me into his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the, the heathen, then immediately, immediately, I conferred not with flesh and blood. Hey, you know what? There's no delay. No delay for us. If God has called you to do something, I don't care if it's to clean toilets, I don't mean if it's to drive a bus, if it's to teach a class, or travel the world preaching the gospel. Don't wait. Amen. Don't wait. Amen. There's a lot of people that are fixing twos. And some of them fixing twos turn into never was. You can't delay, man. Just do what you're supposed to do. Sometimes you, you gotta catch your you know you gotta catch your breath. It's overwhelming. Next week, next week, 20 years ago, at a youth camp, Michelle was there. Mary, Mary was there. My wife didn't even get to go. I think Brother Graham was there. Donna was there. Donna heard I was preaching. She ran out to take care of the kids out in the foyer. That's how she is. She was like that when she was a teenager too. But anyway, she could probably hear me. But Donna was there. And uh, man, I never thought we'd be grown up neighbors. But I remember being there on a Thursday night just praying, God, would you, would you call somebody from our church? Somebody. I see people from other churches going forward and they're, they're surrendering to preach. Lord, our kids that we brought, they ain't too good. They ain't too good to preach. They ain't too good to surrender. They're not too good to be missionaries. Lord, maybe call somebody from our church. It's the weirdest thing in the world. I had my head bowed praying. And man, I know it was not an audible word, but it felt like an audible word. I said, I want you to preach for me. Man, I looked up. Wasn't nobody moving. My buddy Chris was still over here praying. He's a fireman. You can't trust firemen. They'll throw a trick on you. So I was looking at him. I was looking at him. I was like, he didn't, he didn't do nothing. He's, I don't know. So anyway, I was like, we'll get back to praying. Lord, that was weird. But anyway, I don't know what you want to do. Lord, if you just call somebody to preach. And the second time, 20 years ago, next week, next Thursday, like this, this week coming, Thursday night, God called me to preach. And man, it's a whirlwind. I came back home and I told my wife, I said, what, what would you think if I told you God called me to preach when I was at camp? She goes, oh, I'm not surprised at all. I was like, what do you mean? He said, I surrendered to be a preacher's wife when I was like 16 or something. I was like, well, you should have told me I wouldn't have married you. <laughs> I didn't want to 
to be a preacher. I don't even like preachers. I don't even like preachers. Be a preacher. Called my mother-in-law. I said, hey, mom. I believe God called me to preach. She said, oh, I know. I've known a long time. <laughs> Somebody should have said something. I wouldn't have gone to camp. <laughs> Man, I told our preacher and immediately I was like, I don't know what I get. You know, a new Bible and just start preaching. And he's like, go to Bible college. I was like, Phew. I don't want to go to Bible college. I done went to college twice. Drop, dropped out both times. I don't want to drop out in, in God's college, you know. And Man, we went and no delay. It was, it was beginning of June. By August, we started school. Man, that's a whirlwind. I'd been on the same job for over 10 years. I, man, I just, I didn't know nothing about nothing. I didn't be a preacher. I don't even like preachers. But I knew I had to do what God wanted me to do and I had to do it right now. I love it when people just drop what they're doing and do what God wants them to do. Man, it's exciting. It doesn't always make sense. God never promised to make sense. He just promised to supply what you need. He just promised to take care of you. So man, we... uh. I get it. No delay. You know, if God's calling you, some people are like, well, I know God wants me to do something, but I'm just waiting to see. What are you waiting to see? You waiting to die? Waiting to age out? You waiting for Him to call somebody else to take your place? Don't be a fixing to. You know, you're liable to turn into a never was. When God calls us, let's just drop what we're doing and get on about the work of doing what He wants us to do. And listen, it ain't always going to deep, dark Africa. It ain't always trying to smuggle Bibles into China. It ain't like trying to go over to behind the Iron Curtain. It might just be being a Sunday school teacher. It might be showing up for soul winning. It might be praying, being faithful to pray. God help, I love when people get, get excited about praying. It might be driving a, a church bus. It might be being a runner. It might be the person that says, hey, I ain't seen them folks before. Let me go give them a, a, a little welcome card and, and a visitor card. It might just, I, I don't know. It might be just being an encourager. Maybe you'd be the lady who says, oh, somebody's in the hospital, bless their heart. Let me, let me make sure they got something to eat. Somebody died, oh, we got to line up some casseroles. I don't know. Maybe it's being the corn lady at lunch every week. When, when, we, was, when we changed our schedule five, six, seven, eight years ago, whatever it was, man, one lady said, that's a lot of pressure cooking every week. I said, I don't know, I'm hungry every week. I don't know. They're like, well, that's a lot of pressure. I don't know if anybody's going to like that. I said, I don't know. Be the corn lady. Nobody ever gets mad at the corn lady. You could bring her crock pot. Let's bring some cans of corn. You could store it all up here. Come in. You just plug it in, open the can, and pour it in, and it's the corn lady. I've never known anybody to be mad at the corn lady. I love her. I don't even know who she is. I love her. I love her work. Sometimes it's got little pepper flecks in there. Sometimes it's got chopped up jalapenos in there. Sometimes it's all fancy dandy. It's got whole kernel and then some of that cream corn mixed together, doing stuff, mingling it up just right. I love the corn lady. I don't know what God's calling you to do. But I know you ought to get on to doing it real quick. There's no time for delay. Listen, there's too much going on. People are dying and going to hell. You go soul one and you may change their eternal destination. Or if you're the corn lady, they may still go to hell, but at least it won't go on an empty stomach. <laughs> if God's calling you to do something, let's just do it. Partner in. Grab it. You know, if we had to move these pianos, and we have had to move these pianos, two of us look pretty stupid trying to do that. 
But you get about eight people around that thing. We may not look any smarter, but, man, it's a lot easier to move that piano. Just many hands make lighter work. And sometimes people get tired. Let me encourage you. Maybe you're in the work and, 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 and you're tired today. Let, listen, man, we say this all the time. It's okay to get tired in the work. Just don't ever get tired of the work. There's no delay. Second, I want you to know it's, there's no excuses. The Apostle Paul wasn't one of the first apostles. God caught him on the road to Damascus. He wasn't in with the rest. He didn't travel with Jesus. Hey, he didn't get a basket of leftovers after the feeding of the 5,000. He never got to walk on water. He never got to ride in a boat with Jesus and fall asleep in a, in a, why Jesus went to sleep during a storm. He never got to see all those things. He didn't get to see people rose from the dead. He was busy killing Christians. He was working. He thought he was working for God. He's just being religious. But you know what he did? He, he didn't run off to anybody. He said, I didn't confer with flesh and blood. I didn't go hang out with the apostles. I didn't try to become buddies with them. I went back into Arabia and back down into Damascus and then spent three more years. Sometimes we act like, like the, the apostle Paul, he got called on the road to Damascus, got saved there, and all of a sudden like, he just ran off, hooked up with the apostles and started going on mission trips. No, it was years of preparation. See, he knew about religion. He knew about the law. He knew about being a Pharisee. He didn't know nothing about running with Jesus. He didn't know nothing about what Jesus said to his disciples in, in private. He, in fact, in another portion of Scripture, he describes himself as one born out of due season. You ever seen some kids look funny sometimes if they get born too early? And some of them like me, was probably baked a little too long. Like we come out like hungry and need to go to kindergarten already. You know, we're big kids. Paul said, hey, I was like one born out of due season. I, I, didn't, I didn't get everything that they got. I didn't run with you. I didn't walk the streets with Jesus. I, I wasn't there. Hey, I didn't smell that uh, uh, spikener very precious as that woman rubbed Jesus' feet and washed his feet with her tear in her hair. But no excuses. God called me to do what, do something for him, and I just had to get on to doing it. No excuses. You say, well, I didn't get what they got. I didn't grow up in church, and I didn't get anything again. Why are you making excuses? Why don't you just surrender and do what God called you to do? Guess what? I didn't grow up in Sunday school. I didn't know nothing, know nothing about no Awanas. Awanas. I want another hamburger. I don't know. what Awana. I didn't know what all that was. God just said, I want you to do something. I, I don't understand that. Some days I still don't understand that. But I undeniably know the call was there. No excuses. Didn't grow up in church? Play catch up, buddy. Man, I just knew I was going to walk into Bible college and all those spiritual people in there polishing their halos. <sighs> Hear the ruffle of angels' wings in every class. I didn't know that was all just goofy as I was. If God's calling you to do something, there is no excuse. You don't get excuse. Well, I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm too crippled. Uh, I, I'm too fair-skinned. I'm too dark-skinned. I'm too whatever. There's a language barrier. There's this and that. No. No excuses. If God wants you to do something, He's going to take care of it. He just needs a will and heart. He needs you to go. Remember, remember Joshua and Caleb? Moses is done dead. Joshua, he gets up and, and now he's got the preeminence. As I was with my servant Moses, so will I be with you. Now he's the leader. Where's Caleb in all this? Caleb's like got gray hair. He's been running around being faithful all these years. Finally, they go into the promised land. They kill everybody that needs to get killed. And there was a bunch of them that needed to get killed. They got all the way to the end. They said, all right, it's time to divvy up the land. All of a sudden you hear, <coughs> excuse me. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been around before most of these kids was ever born. And that mountain right chair, that one's mine. God promised me that everywhere I put the, my feet, and if you go look, there's some 40-year-old footprints up there and that mountain is mine. 
I'm 80 some odd years old, but I've got the strength to go and I'm going to tear up what needs to get tore up and I've got strength to come back. That one's mine. Man, I love that. Instead of going, well, <laughs> back in the day, I could have done something. No, he said, no, God wants me to do something. That's mine. I don't want nobody else to do my work. I don't want nobody else to have my rewards. I don't want nobody taking my stuff. God's got stuff for me to do. I don't want nobody taking my stuff to do. Hey, ask God for your own stuff to do. No excuses. There are no excuses. There, when we stand before the Lord, listen, man, you're going to be there, and it's going to be, I mean, no excuses. Well, Lord, remember that time I, I pulled my hammy? You know, I woke up that one day, and I uh, just, you know, allergies got me. Felt a little down, felt a little this, and no. Did you do what I told you to do? Did you do what I told you to do? No delay, no excuses. And look at verse 24. And they glorified God in me. You want to be a blessing? No glory for me. The last thing in the world you want to do is to be like, man, look at me. I hope they call my name. I hope I'm... Why don't you just give God the glory? And I don't mean, I did this, and I did that, and I did that, and I did that too, and I did this, and I did that. Oh, I did all this so well. I did this, and I recruited some people, and I taught them, and I, I, I. But I won't give God all the glory. When are you going to start? How about that we don't wait to the end braggadocious about everything we've done, and then say, to God be the glory. How about we just, as we go, to God be the glory. Praise the Lord. Amen to God. Just give God the glory as we go. No glory for us. Our job is not to be preeminent. Our job is not to have the preeminence. Our job is not to have the spotlight. Our job is to shine forth the light of Jesus Christ. He said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. It wasn't long till he knew he was leaving and he told his people, he said, ye are the light of the world. But Jesus is the light. He's what gives us, he's the light of life. He's the light of man. He is the only one that should ever have any glory. Hey friend, let's give glory to God. We give glory to God by when he calls us, no delay. We don't talk about it, we don't plan it out. We jump in both feet, God called us to do it. Let's do it now, glory to God. And then let's don't make excuses. Well, if I just had more money, if I had more time, if I had more whatever, if I was just married, preacher, if I was just single, oh, if I had some kids, if I didn't have all these kids, preacher, if I just had a good job, preacher, if I just didn't have to work all the time, what are you doing? Stop making excuses. God knows who you are, and he knows where you're at, and he knows what you got. No excuses. Let's just glorify God by doing what he wants us to do. And finally, don't ever, and we've probably all been guilty of it from time to time, but God help us not to take his glory for ourselves. Let's don't rob God. Let's just bring glory to him. We're going to have a, a brief invitation. And then we're going to have the Hinkles come back and sing a little bit. And then we'll be out of here. But man, I just... Glory to Him. Glory to Him. No delay. No excuses. No glory for ourselves. Let's all stand together. Glory to God. He's the one that deserves it. Father... We've talked about salvation. Brother James gave a testimony, preached a little bit about salvation. If there's one here that's not saved, there's one here that's not sure that they're on their way to heaven, Lord, please, would you let them come? Let us show them in the Bible how to be saved. Lord, maybe there's one here today that you're, you're calling into your service or you just have a special side job. 
You've got a special one-off one task. I don't know. But I pray they wouldn't delay. I pray they wouldn't waste any time. I pray they wouldn't make excuses. And then if we do something for you, Lord, please help us not take the glory. If you've spoken to hearts, I pray we'd, under, we'd just respond now. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name.